state proceeding in 2017, musicians Gary and Rippity Vanguard were made aware of a number of quarter-inch reels from recording sessions their mother and father had made in the summer of 1968. Most of those recordings were from the sessions that led to the previous Velocity release, the shimmering psychedelic groove trip. But a few of the reels in that collection were from a series of earlier soundtrack sessions laid down in the fall of 1966 with German composer Dirk von Stock Kleber at the helm. In his 20s, von Stock Kleber was part of an artist collective known as the Prague Pack that included musicians, filmmakers, poets, sculptors, and topiary artists. That crew boasted some of the notable creatives of the day, such as Max Billick, Jan Fabinski, and renegade photographer Greg Isvan Gazabo, who would go on to become a cult hero of sorts for his cartoonishly violent paella westerns. Many of the members of that collective grew weary of one another over ideological, economic, artistic, religious, and sexual differences. Von Stock Kleber and Gazabo, however, remained close. When Gazabo started making abstract 16 millimeter films, he would collaborate with Von Stock Kleber, who at the time was experimenting with compositions comprised of only theremins, Galician harps, and rusted tin paint cans used for percussion. Von Stock Kleber quickly became the only composer with whom Gazabo would work. By 1966, Gazabo had built a reputation as a competent narrative filmmaker, specializing in stylish westerns that somewhat toyed with the conventions of the genre, but weren't fully realized deconstructions. After acquiring what was purported to be an endless budget from budding producer and Greek shipping magnate Admetus Argonus, Gazabo set out to create the ultimate western. While Argonus demanded that the lead role was to be played by American television actor Cliff Dalton, Artistic control was left to Gazabo as he began work on what he described in early interviews as the most explosive and wildly violent western ever made. Dioso Vida Lo Feo was a revenge western about an American drifter played by Dalton who's pushed to his limit while searching for his friend's young daughter who disappeared mysteriously during the planning of an Easter parade that was never to happen. The movie would build to a violently climactic ending in which Dalton's nameless character would kill every man living in a mining town that his fruitless search had led him to before blowing himself up with it. The details of how principal photography went wildly astray are rather murky. But by all accounts, things appeared to fly off the hinges as soon as Argonus appeared on the set with it girl Jenny Ondialine, <laughs> who some 50 years later would be the deceased in the aforementioned estate proceedings in 2017. The relationship between Ondialine and Argonus was notoriously scandalous, leading to the creation of no less than three feature-length documentaries, including the critically acclaimed Argonus Affair. Yet the tremors from the arrival of this duo on the set has remained the stuff of folklore. The result, however, is infamous. An abrupt halt on production after the disappearance of several key figures, including Dalton, who showed up back in the States six months later with no recollection as to where he had been or what had happened. Records from Portuguese authorities indicate that there were explosions, chaos, and some definite physical altercations among crew on the set the night before production was called off. But no witnesses were willing to talk, and no arrests were made. Rumors quickly began to swirl, however, with the wildest tale involving Gazabo and Ondialine making a daring escape via pontoon boat from one of Argonus' yachts in the middle of the night, just days after the disaster on set. Though the truth of what actually happened that fateful night and in the ensuing days will likely never be known, Ondialine re-emerged a year later as a key member in the burgeoning hippie and psychedelic movement. Not long after, Gazabo's frozen body was found by a dog sled crew in Alaska. Of course, as everybody knows, Argonus died in a fiery helicopter crash in 1967 on the way to a Bilderberg meeting. But that's an entirely different story for another day. What's relevant to this music project, however, is that Von Stock Kleber had already began laying tracks to the unfinished film score with a great crew of musicians, including noted session drummer Koji Watanabe. These reels are the foundation of this fantastic new musical project that Mr. Quesada has completed. 
and in honor of the original unfinished film that inspired them, we are calling it Dios Vida Lo Feo, Tough Pulp Scores Reimagined by Adrian Quesada. We think you'll love how he merged his sound and influences with what was found on those mysterious recordings from five decades ago. We also believe that anywhere between .001 and 95% of this story is somewhat potentially accurate. 